pull the cover off the conduit box like that. Now, there are also two short black wires that are just clipped and installed here. We mark the A and B coil on every valve that we send out of here so that there's no question you've wired the A and B coil. Um, that is the hot wires that will be coming from our handle to power the valve, the coil A and coil B. We mark those. It doesn't matter whether you wire A and B. The only difference is which handle is going to, or which button is going to be working up and which button is going to be working down. And if that's an issue for you and you have it installed and want to swap them, you would simply come back in here and swap those two points. But we're going to go ahead and pull the clipped wires out now. We're going to measure about how much cord we need from the handle that we just fed down here. We're going to go ahead and cut that cord off. These two switches are independent hot switches and for that reason we have to tie together the brown and white wire and I've gone ahead and trimmed those back. The green wire will go to one of our coils in this valve and the blue wire will go to the other coil. Now this is outlined in your instructions. You have a, a orange, a black, and a red wire that will not be used on this handle. You've got some butt connectors included in your kit. We're going to make a connection right here between the extra wire that we put in and the brown and white wire. We'll go ahead and insert the brown and white. You get a little bit of crimp on there so they don't come off. We'll insert that extra wire in the other end of our butt connector. I'm using a black wire. I typically try to use red or black one if I'm running a, a hot wire that's just 12 volts power. Go ahead and crimp that. We want to go ahead and pull some of this slack back out. Before we get it all pressed down in, we want to put the green and the blue into the two respective coil locations on the valve. I have to do those one at a time here. Insert them in. Go ahead and tighten that down. Get the green one installed. I will install the blue on the other coil. And at this point, you can go ahead and clip the orange, red, and black that we're not using. Try to get that flattened down in the conduit box the best that we can. And we'll go ahead and reinstall the cover on our conduit box. With the valve cover secured, I now have the extra wire that we've added in here to get my power from over at the fuse box. So I'm going to need the fusible link out of my kit. I'm going to need to locate the fuse box. What we've got to do to begin the electrical installation is locate our 12 volt power source. We want to locate a wire that has 12 volts DC when the tractor switch is in the on position. It doesn't have to be a wire that's only hot when it's in the on position, but basically that means your handle doesn't have any power on it whenever the tractor's turned off. So it's ideal to locate one. Once you've located the tractor fuse box, need to remove it and get to the wires behind the fuse box. They're normally relatively easy to access. Some are a little tighter than others. Um, on the Kubotas, you can almost always count on using one of the red wires with a white stripe. Um, I've got our meter set up here to read DC volts. And the tractor switch is off just to verify what we have. I'm locating a, a grounded place. Now these tractors have a ground lug that you can get a good contact on. You may have to scratch a spot on the tractor chassis and try this, but you want to test a wire using your leads. And you can see with the tractor switch off, I have no voltage on this line. Let's go ahead and see if that's different with the switch on. I'm still on the same wire. I'm on tractor ground and I've got 12 volts, 12.6 volts DC, so we're, this is ideal. We'll use this red wire with the white stripe. I'm going to shut the power back off. That we're going to use a side-by-side -side splice connector to make this connection. We check all these kits before they go out and verify that they have a 20 amp fuse. We're going to put that side-by-side -side splice connector on and insert the fusible link tag in into the only other vacant hole on the side-by-side -side splice connector. When you pull this across, it's just real important to be sure you only gather the wire you're working on and don't get any of the other wires. 
should be able to get it partially closed by hand, and then you'll need to get some pliers, have a pretty flat end to go ahead and make that connection. You need to clamp on the center of the side-by-side splice connector to make sure that you have clamped the metal clamp inside that actually penetrates the wires and makes this connection. Check that to make certain that it won't come out. The clamp connector is locked. Now it's time to reinstall the fuse box. I'm leaving it hanging out to the side of the tractor right now. I taped it off while we we're working on this installation. Um, this is going to run back through. I want to make sure that you pull enough of that black wire over here that you can leave this fusible link laying right here. You can put it up on the inside of your wires to operate, but you want to be able to get to this fusible link so that you can check the fuse. So I'm going to run, route the black wire back. Now that I know where the fuse box is, I'm going to route it towards there so we can get power to our back. You want to be certain to avoid moving parts the best that you can so that you get long life out of the wire. And as with everything else, we want to tie these wires off as we go, keep them as protected as we can. I'm going to go ahead and secure my power wire over here. And when we're finished, we'll go back and clip any of the ties that we've put on. We'll leave ourselves enough slack that we can work on this connection, that we can tuck it all back into that area when we're done. So I'm going to go ahead and clip the black wire here. Those two ends exposed, I'll go ahead and... This connection's a little easier to get to. It's better to do it this way. Anyway, we'll get both ends into our butt connector and then crimp it. Uh, if you have heat shrink, Heat shrink works very well. Um, doesn't have to be done, but obviously the more water tight you can make the connection, the better. That's just up to the individual mechanic that's putting this on. Make sure that our wires are secure, and they are. For our purposes, we're going to go ahead and leave that connection as it is and try to put the excess under the tractor the best, or under the console the best that we can. Turn our switch on now. You should be able to hear the valves click. So we know that our valve is working properly. One button for one, one button for the other. Be sure to go back over in your mind if you've tightened all of the fit and make a complete check for one touch kit before putting it on in a pack and trying.